you're a responsible business. You actually prefer to work with other social enterprises and responsible businesses. You naturally form links between these different, these different enterprises, right? If I'm a social enterprise, I want to source my products from, let's say, another organic producer. Or I want to work with a bank that matches my values, right? I want to have my design company understand what my message is and be able to communicate that. So it naturally forms a kind of community. Right? You also have pollinators. And we have actually many of those pollinators in the room today. Right? So those are people who go between different groups and share ideas. Right? Our incubators, our accelerators, all of those things, they help share ideas between different groups, between different countries. And we also have to talk about our niche. Right? Niche if you're in America. Niche, right? Everywhere else. Uh, we have to talk about what our niche is. If you're really trying to build a new ecosystem, you don't want to just do, you don't want to copy what another business is doing. You want to look for where the gaps are. Where's your little space in the ecosystem? Where is there something missing that you can fill the gap? And we're starting to see that happening in Sri Lanka right now, where people are looking and they're finding where's the opportunity, where's the gap. And actually, when you t start to take this view, a lot of the problems don't feel quite as overwhelming anymore. Okay? Anytime a problem comes up, that's a niche. That's an opportunity for a new enterprise. Okay? So if I'm, if I'm concerned about what's happening with sexual abuse and what's happening with young girls, huh, that's a niche. That's an opportunity. That's something that's a problem that we can now look at with the lens of a social enterprise. Okay? If I think that organic food is too expensive, that's also a niche. That's an opportunity. That means that there's a space there. There's a, there's a chance to do something. Right? right now, we have an issue with finding sustainable packaging. Ah, that means that's a business opportunity. Right? So that's, that, to me, that's a really key point. This is something that's emerging. It's something that's evolving. And that brings us back to this question of why Sri Lanka? And from my perspective, it's because Sri Lanka is starting to demonstrate this new economy. It's starting to show that a different path is possible. It has a, everybody always talks about the potential of Sri Lanka. That's, if you go back and look at literature, it's all about potential. I'm not saying potential. I'm saying it's happening now. You can already start to see this kind of thing happening. And Sri Lanka actually has an advantage for this, right? It has a number of things that make it so that it's, it's really well positioned to be a model, to be able to show a different example to the rest of the world. And the first one, and I think this is really important, there's actually a really strong culture of giving in Sri Lanka. So there's this um, International Global Giving Index, I'm sure many of you might be familiar with it. Sri Lanka is consistently in the top 10 in this International Global Giving um, Index. And we can see that at lots of levels. We can see that in how consumers think, right? I'm just blown away by the level of interest and awareness and wanting to, to purchase things according to your values. You can also see it in companies, right? If you're talking to large companies in somewhere like the US, this idea that business might do more than maximize profit, this is a radical idea. But when you talk to businesses here, most of them are already, they feel a responsibility to giving back, right? They already, there is a sense of giving. The second one is that it's highly connected, right? There is, we say there's no such thing as six degrees of separation in Sri Lanka. Everybody's, it's one or two degrees, right? And that actually makes it easier. If you're trying to develop a new ecosystem, you can find the people that you need to talk to, right? It's easier to connect with them. Another one is that it's small, right? That helps because the distance between urban areas and rural areas isn't so big. You can move to the city and still keep a link with the rural areas. You can picture that we're a closed loop. You know that we're a closed, it's an, it's an island. You know we're a closed system. So when we have an issue with drought, we can see it. We can experience it. It keeps us all connected. It keeps us remembering that we have to find a way to all live together on this tiny piece of land. Right. It's also diverse, which if you're thinking from a systems perspective is a huge advantage. Diversity helps with resilience. So it's diverse in terms of ecology, in terms of culture, in terms of the number of different sectors. And the final one might not seem like a positive thing, but in my perspective it is. Um, it's, Sri Lanka's a little disadvantaged in our current economic system. Right? 
We don't have an active source of fossil fuels, right? which right there would make it really hard to evolve a new economy. And it's really difficult to compete on price. You know, anything that we do in Sri Lanka, probably India or China can do it cheaper. Okay? So that means that we need to specialize. Where Sri Lanka is the strongest, where we do have the competitive advantage, is in these niche markets. Right? When we talk about garments without guilt, or when we talk about organic agriculture, Sri Lanka has an excellent reputation. Ecotourism, Ayurveda. Right? We have people working on renewable energy. They're building an amazing electric car, the Vega car. So all of these things are areas where Sri Lanka, because we're not, because we can't compete on price, we have to compete on other things. And we have potential to compete on sustainability. So about four years ago, we began kind of testing out this idea of markets being a social institution by creating a market that has a different set of rules. It has minimum standards, those are the rules, right? Minimum standards to participate. You have to be good for people, good for planet to participate in the good market. Many of the people involved in creating those, the rules of the marketplace are actually in this room today. And the thing that's been incredible is What's happened with that, right? So when it first started, we looked out, we identified these pioneer species. We identified these businesses that are a little bit crazy. They've been doing this for decades, right? And we found about, we had started with 32. When Good Market first started, there were 32 vendors. Right? And the incredible thing is that people kept coming. People kept coming and telling about new things that they were doing. And now there are more than 300 Good Market vendors. And that's across all sectors. There's people doing things with construction, there's people doing things with energy, it's across all parts of the country, and it's a new ecosystem that's starting to emerge. So I think the important point here is that the term social enterprise might be new in Sri Lanka. We don't use those words very much, but the concept is not new at all. There's um, the idea of right livelihood, of Sama Aji, but that's, it's deeply part of the culture. It's something that's already here. This is not new, this is not foreign. So I'd like to suggest that for a lot of our international guests, there are already things in Sri Lanka that we can learn from. And there's also a lot of things we here in Sri Lanka can learn from other countries. Right? So we're really happy to have all the friends from overseas here with us. Um, over the next two days, we're going to be talking a lot about enabling ecosystems for social enterprise. I, um, I think Peter will be giving us examples about how the government in the UK um, has helped enable social enterprise. It's very good lessons for all of, all of our friends in government here. And that's amazing, and it will speed up the process. The more that we can do with government to be able to create an enabling ecosystem, that would be amazing. But the key point is we don't have to wait for it. This is already happening. We are the ecosystem. Right? This is something that's already going on. So we are making choices every single day. We make choices about the food we eat, we make choices about where we buy it from, where we get our clothes from. Each of these choices affects the type of world that we're, we live in, and it helps create this kind of ecosystem. The choices about where you work, or what you do in your work. If your work is organizing a conference, are you doing it without plastic water bottles, right? All of these choices are what helps to build an ecosystem and create a new economy. And we can tell we're starting to get there when we're able, to, when we're making these choices, if every single choice I make, this is the goal, every single choice I make, I'd like to be supporting a social enterprise or responsible business. I want my bank to be a social enterprise or responsible. I want every single interaction I have during the day to be supporting this new economy. Right? So I just want to leave with one final thought. This is something I think many of you have heard of. But that every time we spend money, we're casting a vote for the kind of world we want. And this is how we build a new economy. Thank you.